Hey there, good morning. This is Math 8, Unit 8, Lesson 11, Finding Distances in the Coordinate Plane. Okay, so first of all, it says for Activity 1, Closest Distance, order the following pairs of coordinates from closest to farthest apart and be prepared to explain your reasoning. Okay, so we have this pair of numbers from 2, 4 and 2, 10. Okay, and we have a variety of them here. What I notice about a lot of them is that they seem to share a value in common, like the x value is exactly the same. Okay, which means if the x value is the same, that means they are going to be on the line of x equals 2. So let's say if I take a coordinate grid here, for example, and I was to mark out, for example, 1, 2, right, that's as far as I would go with the x value for both those numbers. But 1 is going to be located at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the other one will be located at 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. <laughs> Meaning the distance between the two points, in this case here, has nothing to do with the x actually, but has everything to do with how far apart are the two y values, 10 and 4. <laughs> so in this case, we could do a simple 10 minus 4 if we chose to do that. And we'd say the distance there <coughs> is 6. So the distance from this point to this point is 6. We could do a similar thing with b. With b, what we notice is we see that the y values are actually the same, which means it's going to be on the y value of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our point should be somewhere, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, make sure I'm going, on this line. So our two points are going to be somewhere on this line right there. And in fact, we're at negative 3, so we'd go over 1, 2, 3, and we're at positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, this is not to scale, of course, but if we're looking at what's the distance from here to here, I don't actually have to worry about the y values. Instead, I need to find the distance between the two x values from a negative 3 to a 5. So again, I could do a little subtraction. I could do 5 minus a minus 3, and just putting the large value first, large value first, and when I do is subtract a negative, that's the same as doing 5 plus 3, and so the distance there ends up being 8. You can also just count it out, you could count out and say, well, to go from here to there, it's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of the coordinate grid marks to go from one to the other. Okay, let's see what else you see. With C, we see that again, the negative 12 matches the negative 12, so the difference we're going to find is between the y values, negative 12 and negative 1. So if I do a kind of think about this one here, it's they're both negative. Since they're both negative, I can just subtract 12 minus 1 because they're both going to be over here. And I can say that that's going to be equal to 11. If I wanted to think about subtraction still, then really what I'm doing is I would do the absolute value of negative 12 minus a minus 1, which would mean negative 12 plus 1, but see that, that messes me up now. Yeah, negative 12 plus 1 is actually going to be a negative 11, but the absolute value makes it 11. Okay, we'll talk about that more later. For now, just it's easy to say, well, I'm just counting the distances here. For D, I'm, I see that the x values are going to the same, so the one I'm looking for the difference are between the y values, 0, negative 9, and that's just going from 0 to negative 9, so that's going to be simply 9. And here, the y values are the same, negative 10, negative 10. So we're looking for the difference between a 1 and negative 4. So 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, we're looking at x value, sorry. So 1 and negative 4. So we're talking about 1, 2, no, <laughs> sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. Between 1 and negative 4. Sorry, x values. So the difference there is 5. So I have a is 6, b is 8, c is 11, d is 9, and e is 5. So in terms of putting it in order, we would say that the order goes e, which is 5, a, which is 6, b, which is 8, d, which is 9, and c, which is 11. Okay, so these distances are, are fairly easy to calculate once you recognize that these are all two a pair of points that are on a line. 
And when points are on the line, you're just releasing the difference between one and the other. And you can count up the grid squares if you're using a coordinate axis. You just count them up and see what's going to be. Or you find the difference from one to the other. This is really essential to what we're doing today in today's lesson. Now it says to name another pair of coordinates that would be closer together than the first pair on your list. Well, the first pair on our list is here at 1, comma, negative 10 and negative 4, comma, 10. And it has a distance in the x values, the x values of 5. So how do I make one that's closer than 5? Well, I could do this. I can go ahead and keep the same y value if you wanted to, just to make it on the same exact line. Right, so this is exactly the same y value. So we're now on the same horizontal line. And this was a difference of 1 to negative 4, made it a difference of 5. I could do 1 to negative 1. Now what's the difference between 1 and negative 1? Well, that's going to actually be um, 2 in this case, right? You do 1 minus a negative 1 equals 2. So now it's closer. And then finally, the last one they want you to do is do one that's a little longer than the last, the longest. Our longest was 12, so our longest is this one. And we had the same um, x values, so let's keep the same x values just for fun. And that was 11, so it went from negative 12 to negative 1. So let's go to negative 1, we'll start there, and we'll go all the way up to negative 20. So now the difference here, this is the same. So our difference is between negative 20 and negative 19 for a distance of uh, negative 1 <laughs> for a distance of 19. And there you go. So now we made it a little bit farther apart than the last one there. All right, let's look at the next part. The next one's called how far apart. Find the distances between the points, three points shown. Okay, so now we're gonna take us a step further from what the last activity was. We notice here for the first part that these are on the same uh, x value, which means they're on the same line from here to here, the same horizontal line, because they share the same x coordinate. So the distance from here to here, though, is going to be based upon the y values. Now our y values, we have 9 to minus 3. So we could do think about 9 minus a minus 3. And 9 minus a negative 3 is going to be equal to 12. So we have a distance here of 12 for that length right there. This distance right here at negative 3, we see matches the negative 3 over there for the x value. So we can draw a line from here to here. You can mark that up there if you want and make it a green one just so you can see a little better. All right. And again, we're going to find the difference between these two. So my larger value, I'm going to do 16 minus a negative 14, which means I'm going to add those together, and that gives me a value of 30. So those are pretty easy because they're on the vertical line, the horizontal line, they're pretty easy to tell. The one that's going to be a little trickier to tell though is when we now look at this one right here. Because now I have this diagonal line, which is not a very good diagonal line when I just drew that right there, but going from there to there. But because we know a lot about the Pythagorean theorem now, we recognize that this corner, because it's two straight lines, forms a hypotenuse, doesn't it? That's a 90 degree angle. So that helps us find the hypotenuse, which is here. So now we have a C value. We have an A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Or in other words, we could do 12 squared plus a 30 squared is going to equal the unknown value there. So using what we know about these distances on the horizontal and vertical lines, allows us to find the missing difference of a, of a line that is at a, you know, an angle, so to speak. It's on a, it's diagonal. So 12 squared is 144. 30 squared is 900. That all equals C squared. So 144 plus 900 is 1,044 equals C squared. So I take the square root of both sides in order to get the C by itself. So C equals the square root of 1,044. So this value is the length of the blue line right there. Okay, now, is that like a number that I know? Not at all, <laughs> right? It's not something that I know, but that is what it is. So that's the length of that line right there. And that's how you find it.
you're able to find the lines that are that are here with the, the square values, the, the length, the leg lengths, because they're on horizontal vertical, and then you can find that one there. Okay. So activity three I'm not gonna do. Activity three is optional. Okay, if you want a good challenge, it certainly is a great, great challenge. And I want you to find the perimeter of these lengths. Now notice these perimeters, you don't have any lines that are on the, the vertical or the X and Y kind of plane, so to speak, right? But I could do some extra work here. This might be a little, way too much extra. I could come down, I could draw a line from here to here, and we could box this guy in, couldn't we? If I was to box this fella in and go across, like so, if I box these guys in, I could find, for example, that the length from here to this point, which is going to be at 4, negative 4, the length from here to here is going to be 6, the length from 2 to 4 is going to be 2, and now I could find that missing length there, and I could find out what that's going to be. So that spot right there would be, you know, 2 squared plus 6 squared, uh, which is 4 plus 36, which becomes 40. So this length becomes the square root of 40. Okay? Because again, that's going to be equal to c squared, equals c squared, equals c squared. How do you get it by itself? Square root. So square root of 40 equals c squared. And you can do the same thing for the other ones and then add those up to find what the perimeters are going to be for all of them. That's one way of looking at that. So I'm going to skip that for now. If you're doing that on your own as um, you know, a good activity, then awesome. Go for it. Okay. All right. So I'm looking now at, look at the next activity. We're going to go to 11.4. Okay, not going to do are you ready for more. We're going to go to 11.4 to find the right distance. It says, have each person in your group select one of the sets of coordinate pairs shown here. Then calculate the length of the line segment between those two coordinates. Once they're calculated, have the group share what you did. So we have several points here, and each of these are going to give you a different response, different answer. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the third one real quick. So here we go. I'm going to draw for myself a coordinate plane just to take a look at it. It's going to help me just see it a little bit better. I know first value I'm going to go out. I have the negatives are going to go, sorry, the x's are going to go from negative 1 to 5. So I'm going to go from negative 1 out to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the y values are 2 to negative 6. So 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my first one is at negative 1, comma 2, right here, or somewhere like that. Negative 1, comma 2. And then I'm at 5, comma, negative 6, way down there. Okay. So I have the two given points there, which means I don't I know that I want to find the distance between these two points here and here. This is not a um, you know, horizontal vertical line, so I'm going to need to find some other points. So the best thing to do is to find a point that you can work with, and so I'm going to plot one right here where my x value is negative 1, and my y value matches this one at negative 6. So notice what we did. We took the x value of that one and made it match, and the y value of this one and made it match. And in doing that, now I have formed, like we did before, all right, I formed for myself a nice little square, or a triangle, sorry. We have this going there. And I should go through the line there, but I just missed a little bit. And we have this one going this way. All right, and then from that, I'll be able to now figure out my missing line right there, which is the one I'm looking for. Okay, so the distance from two to negative 6 is negative 6, that's right, it's 2 minus a minus 6, which is going to be 8. So this distance is 8. The distance here between our different values are negative 5 and negative 1 and 5. So I can do 5 minus a negative 1, those two values there, and that becomes equal to 6. This value is 6 right here. So I have a 6, I have an 8. I have one more to go right there. All right, so I could do a six squared plus eight squared equals c squared to find this missing length right here. Because again, what do I have? I have a right angle in this triangle, 
which means that's going to be the hypotenuse right across from it. So 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64 equals c squared. 36 plus 64 equals 100 for c squared. I take the square root of both sides. In order to find the square root of 100 is 10 equals c. So the value of this one is 10. Now that's a good one to know because we know, for example, interesting thing is we know that if we have a 3, 4, 5 special triangle, that that's always a right triangle to a special right triangle. Notice what these values are. We have 6, 8, and 10. What do you notice about the difference between 3 and 6? Oh, it's times 2. How about 4 and 8? Oh, it's times 2. How about 5 and 10? Oh, it's times 2. So if, if I knew that was 6 and that's 8 and this is a right angle, I could assume that it was 5 times 10. 5 times 2 is 10, <laughs> right? I mean, you could do the same thing like this. What happens if I had, for example, 18? Let's go with 18. And let's go with 24. Do you know what this value is going to be? Well, 6 times what gets you to 18? Well, that's 6 times, oh, sorry, uh, 3 times what? <laughs> 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. Over here, this is what? This is 4 times 6. So what is 5 times 6? Oh, that's going to be 30. And now you have another 3, 4, 5 triangle. Just It's a little bit larger values, but it's still 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that's one. Your partners do the other ones and see what you find out and compare those to the rest of them. Okay, so now in your own words, you want to write to be able to explain and give an explanation to someone else for how to find the distance between two coordinate pairs. So be able to do that. Okay, I think the key thing, first of all, step one is to form a right triangle. I think that's the key step here we did first. Okay, we want to determine the leg lengths. So how long are each leg? We did that first. And then we use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the distance. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Form the right triangle, found the leg lengths, and then use Pythagorean theorem to find what was missing there. All right, well, let's take a look at our summary. There we go. So in summary, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between any two points on the coordinate plane. Okay, and that's really all we did. We can use Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between any two points on a coordinate plane. And that's exactly what we did. And we can see the example here. They had the vertical, the diagonal line. And they went ahead and said, well, we can find the distance from here to here. And you can see they're using that absolute value idea, right? Of the one minus the other. That's the same thing we we're talking about. To find the, the distance there. Most of you will probably just count it out, and that's okay. But once you find those, then you can use that information to then figure out what the length of the horizontal is going to, or the diagonal is going to be because it is the hypotenuse there. Okay? And that is the whole idea. So we're going to pause there, let you work on your homework, and then we'll come back and check it together in just a few minutes. Hey there, homework time, Math 8, Unit 8, Lesson 11, Finding Distances in the Coordinate Plane. The right triangles are drawn in the coordinate plane, and the coordinates of the vertices are labeled. For each right triangle, label each leg with its length. So I just want you to find the leg is all you have to do. When I was first doing this, I got in a hurry, and I found all the hypotenuse lengths too, which you certainly can do, but it just wants to know the leg length. Okay, so for this first one look here, we're going to look the x values the same. So we're going to look at the diff distance between 8 and 5, which happens to be 3. And here we'll find the distance between negative 8 and negative 2, which is 8 plus 2, which is 10. Here, the x values are the same, so we'll find the distance between 4 and negative 9. So we can add them up and think about 9 plus 4 is 13. And here, the y value is the same, so we'll find the distance between the x values. So 7 minus 3 is going to be 4. Here, the x values, the y value is the same, so the difference between 10 and negative 3 are going to be 7. And here, the x value is the same, so the distance between negative 6 and negative 1 is 5. 
And that's all there is to it. They don't want you to do more than that. So that's it. You could definitely find the other ones if you chose to. It just didn't ask you to. Okay, number two. Find the distance between each pair of points. If you get stuck, try, try plotting the points on the line. All right, so here we have the same x value. That's handy. So when the x value is the same, we're just gonna find the distance between the y points, negative 11 and two. So I can think of that as being two minus a negative 11. And I do always wanna have that become a positive. I know that will, but absolute value of that. So two minus minus 11 becomes equal to 13, and that's the distance there. Here, I don't have any matching points, and here, I don't have any matching kind of x or y values, so I have to think that one through a little bit more. So this one, I can plot it out real quick. I know the first point's at zero, then I'm at one, two, three, so there's negative three, and down one, two, three, four. All right, so here we are at negative three, comma, negative four. So for my triangle, I'm gonna go across this way, which that has a distance already, since I'm going to zero, it's kinda nice there, of three. And then I'm gonna go up this way. I'm on the coordinate grid, so it's pretty nice. I'm just gonna go up four. There's not a lot of work to do there, even though the numbers didn't match. If you look at it, oh, that's pretty easy. And I'm looking at a three and a four with the legs. And I notice that this is the right triangle, which means that what's left? Oh, it's a three, four, five triangle. So this is gonna be equal to five. And then finally for C, first point is at eight comma zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight comma zero. And our next one is at zero comma one, two, three, four, five, six. So because they're using the coordinate grid here and the, uh, the axes, it allows us to be able to plot this pretty simply and find those distances as well, okay? So you first you can look at the numbers and go, oh, I don't know, but once you look at them, you realize, oh, well, they want, yes, that diagonal line there, but what do they already give us? Because it's on the coordinate plane, they gave, uh, oh, sorry, on the y-axis, they gave us this distance right here, which is already gonna be, what, six, and they gave us this distance right here, just so you can help count it out a little bit, which is already at eight. Okay, now again, if I think about this, I have a six and eight just like I worked before. I could go ahead and multiply it out, right? I could do a six squared plus eight squared equals c squared, or I can remember from my notes, this became 36 plus 64, which became 100 equals c squared. And I took this c squared of both, and I got 10 equals c. So this was a 10, or I remember that this is a three times two is six, four times two is six, and five times two is 10. It's actually a three, four, five triangle, just multiplied by two. <laughs> All right, so that's that one there. Okay, let's look at the next page. Okay, which slope, which sorry, which line has a slope of 0.625 and which has a slope of 1.6? Okay, so to do that, what we can take a look at is we actually have two triangles, and we can look at the points, and we can look at the first one, we'll call it the blue one, kind of looking at how much it goes up versus how much it goes over. So for the blue one, the blue triangle, we can see that it goes from point to point, it's going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so the rise is 8 over the run, which is one, two, three, four, five. And eight divided by five equals 1.6. Now for the next one, we have this line here, going point, and that point there, okay? So for the green triangle, what we have is going up one, two, three, four, five and over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And five divided by eight is equal to 0 0.625. So 
So the green one has a slope of 0 .0, uh, 0 0.625 and the blue one is the other one. You could look at that by doing the math on it. You could also recognize that 1.6 is greater than 0 0.625, has a greater slope, which means it's going to be going the one um, up the fastest. It's going to have the steeper slope there. So another way of why you could tell that's going to work out. This is the math part behind it, and this is just kind of the why. It's going to be steeper because it's a, a taller slope. It's going up more than it's going over. All right. All right, number four says write an equation for the graph. The graph is on the next page. Let's take a look at the next page. So here is our graph. All right. We're going to write an equation for that. So we know that the equation we're going to put in the form of y equals slope times x plus the y-intercept. In our case here, we know that y equals uh, something times x, and we're going to add it to the y-intercept, which is at this point, 1.5. So that part we got there, that's pretty easy. That's our 1.5 value. Now the slope though, we want to see how much it goes up and over. I can see right now that this, I got to go to whole numbers here. So how much does it go up before it gets to this point right there? I want to go with a whole value, not just the point of the line. So I see I'm going to go up one, two, and then I'm going to go over one. So my slope is plus two over one, 2 over 1, which is simply 2. So my slope is going to be 2x, which means my equation is y equals 2x plus 1.5. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.